Welcome to SBC 501 Strategic Branding Global Perspective. My name is Rachel Kabiktin of Group 8, and by now you already know of our brand of choice. But did you know that we didn't mention the name McDonald's at all during our intro? Just by the color and logo alone, you already know. We'll walk you through this brand, starting with the brand profile presented by Melissa, followed by communal and cultural influences presented by Sophia, how McDonald's is leveraging its cultural equity by Darius, and lastly, recommendations by our group presented by yours truly. So, let's dive in! Let's talk about the history of McDonald's and how it came about. So the McDonald's brothers, they moved from New England to California because they wanted to find new opportunity. They started out in the movie business, but unfortunately they failed. So they tested out the drive-in restaurant business. And here they were very successful. They sold 15 cent hamburgers through their speedy service system and began to franchise this concept. Then Ray Kroc came along and he became the McDonald brothers franchising agent and opened the first McDonald's in Illinois in 1955. McDonald's then took over the rights to the Brothers Company in 1961 for $2.7 million. Kroc's vision was to have a thousand McDonald's locations in the United States, but he went well over that number. He kept growing and growing and he expanded internationally in Canada and Puerto Rico in 1967. And today there are over 36,000 restaurants in over 100 different countries. McDonald's values quality food and sourcing and sustainable food. They also value protecting the planet and they value tight-knit communities and truly want to positively impact communities all around the world. They also value inclusion and empowerment in terms of their jobs and their internal employees. At a very basic level, their brand identity is of course the recognizable golden arches that form the letter M along with the catchy slogan, I'm loving it. And of course, the character that represents the brand is Ronald McDonald. McDonald's primary target market is medium to low income families of all ethnicities with kids under the age of 10. They value community, family, equality, affordability, and convenience. The parents of these families are always on the go, so they go to McDonald's to save both time and money. The kids love McDonald's because of the Happy Meals, which are created specifically for their age group. McDonald's secondary target market are millennials. Um, even though McDonald's is viewed as very unhealthy, they are trying to adopt their marketing plan to appeal to millennials who value clean and healthy eating. For example, McDonald's has added fruit and maple oatmeal with fresh apple slices to their breakfast menu. This is a great alternative for millennials who want a cheap yet low calorie breakfast. Communal influences can impact a brand in positive and negative ways. A great example of how McDonald's implemented this was the use of crowdsourcing. In 2011, McDonald's introduced its first crowdsourcing campaign in Germany. My Burger was an online contest that invited customers to create their own burger through an online platform where they could choose the ingredients and then submit their entry and creation for voting. Those burgers that had the most votes by the public were then sold across the country. Burger innovators were promoting their burgers, hence McDonald's itself, and they had amazing results. McDonald's has also called for crowdsourcing for advertising ideas. For example, in 2008, they teamed up with MySpace to create a jingle contest for their 40th anniversary. Another positive communal influence are brand communities, and McDonald's has a very peculiar one. Over the years, McDonald's has sold a bunch of toys in their Happy Meals, which has led to the creation of McDonald's Collectors. These are a group of customers that gather around either online or in physical places to trade track and sell different McDonald's toys. They like sharing their collections with other people and will sometimes interact with different brand communities of other brands whenever McDonald's has a collaboration. Due to McDonald's size and presence globally, it has definitely been a target for negative communal influences. Max Supersize is one of McDonald's most famous doppelganger brand images. It challenges McDonald's claims on caring about their customers and wanting to impact possibly in the community by claiming they only care about feeding themselves with money. This DVI has been sold in toys, sculptures, paintings, beadboards, and was even featured and used as the main poster of Super Size Me. Super Size Me changed the world of fast food. It's a revolutionary documentary that features filmmaker Morgan Spurlark eating nothing but McDonald's for 30 days. He eventually gets sick and develops health problems. Over the years, McDonald's has encountered other DVIs and even brand sabotage due to different concerns such as low wages, influencing obesity and pure nutrition, climate change, and mid-consumption by activists. Now I want to talk a little bit about cultural equity, 
Although McDonald's is a global brand, it is highly associated with America. McDonald's stays true to these values in order to represent a little bit of America around the world. But to also represent the country they're in, they do make some changes in their spaces and menus. For example, you can find rice in the menu in China. India does not serve beef in their menus. There are vegan options in Sweden and Falafel. European countries have bigger macafés and even serve macaroons. Although perception globally is positive and stays true to American values, you can definitely see a tropicalization within each country. Hey Darius, we're live. Hey you guys, how you doing? My name is Darius and I'm gonna to talk to you about culture and community when it comes to McDonald's organization. Now, McDonald's took feedback from their employees and workers in order to listen to those voices and improve their culture and build community. They have a very diverse workforce. You can see that through the employees that work there. There are usually uh, teenage kids that's working there that, that live in the surrounding areas. It gives those local communities and the people that live in those communities a chance to get ahead in life and get some opportunities. McDonald's made a lot of charitable donations in the world. For example, they have the Ronald McDonald House that gave shelter to families that were sick and had to travel far. They needed a place to stay until they recovered. They lifted the stress off of those families' shoulders by giving them a place to stay and giving them better hospital treatment as well. Another example of their charitable donations that built their community is they, they started a football program in the UK and from one football program, it became over 5,000 football programs that they started for kids that wanted to play in sports and wanted to get ahead in life and get better opportunities. Um, they are definitely taking the right steps in order to build the community within the McDonald's organization. McDonald's is doing a great job when it comes to connecting to the public and the modern day culture. Now, they chose a few different archetypes in order to represent their brand public. For example, Travis Scott has his own meal on the menu now, as well as another hip hop star called Sweetie. She has her own meal now on the menu. They're definitely connected with the youth and staying relevant. They run a lot of social media ads and, and sweet stakes contests. For example, they have a contest where you can win a ring called the Bling Mac that's made out of actual real 18 karat gold and real diamonds and gems. Now, uh, they have a contest where you have to post something supportive about uh, McDonald's or your community by using a special McDonald's hashtag in order to be eligible to win in that contest. I thank you guys for taking time to sit with me and chat about some of the key things about McDonald's culture and community building. But for now, I'm going to enjoy my Big Mac. With 39,000 restaurants worldwide in over 100 countries and a marketing budget of up to $650 million annually, McDonald's have almost done it all whether good or bad. It got me thinking, how can we increase food traffic in our restaurants? How can we get people excited to go to McDonald's? And then it hit me. Before I talk about our big idea, there are two things that I'd like to point out. First, Companies are starting to heavily invest in digital transformation. And second, an overwhelming 87% of people surveyed in the US, Canada, UK, Mexico, and countries in Asia are excited to travel again. Our big idea for McDonald's is to leverage their immense global footprint and the cultural equity they built over the years. The McWorld Digital Passport is an initiative that will give consumers a purpose to go to McDonald's. Our app will list all of our branches worldwide and consumers can scan a one-time barcode after purchase that will enable them to check in that McDonald's branch or if they order online in the app, it will automatically be checked in. There will be a leaderboard for city, state, country, and international based on different criteria, like most number of unique check-ins, number of check-ins overall, or number of unique countries visited, and so much more. Our McWorld Digital Passport will enable our customers to create their own bucket list of different places they'd like to go to and enable them to check in to different scenic McDonald's all over the world. 
that you want to sample? How about I let you win my bucket list? So grab your passport and let's go! While you're touring the world with me, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching our video. We hope you learned something new. See you soon!